and uh, welcome back everybody to um, another 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 rivet training session brought to you by yours truly um, righty -o. so um, what we have um, is we could say in essence you know a mostly completed um, project we've drawn most things um, you know we've taken elevation sections details um, Etc. So we've used a lot of tools, um, and just want to sort of start adding a tiny little bit of finesse now, and then we can um, uh, probably very, very nearly call it quits. Then we can I oh, might start doing some videos on um, other bits and bobs. Okay, so um, so what I want to think about here is that um, in this view, which is our ground floor view, okay, we can see you know, obviously the ground floor, okay, but over this area here, there is also you know an element of the first floor that we can't see, okay. So we need to um, obviously probably architecturally just be able to show the builder, um, yeah, well, and everybody really, where the outline of that first floor above is, okay, and likewise we can dress it up in other ways. Oh, there goes email again. Okay, so the way I do it is I use a combination of detail lines and um, something called groups. Okay, so, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into the first floor plan and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, an outline for the um, for the group uh, for or for the first floor, we're going to group it up and then we're going to copy it uh, to another location. Okay, so, um, so here we are, first floor plan. There's the outside edge there. Okay, we can see bits of roof down below which we don't need to be too interested in right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my detail lines, so DL for detail lines. Um, I normally run with a dash line, so I might use a, um, nice for argument's sake, let's use a dash 0.25 pen weight. So a little bit heavier, but nothing too serious. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to basically, I'm going to start clockwise, I'm going to grab, just follow the outside of the first floor. Now, really important thing here is just make sure that you do actually if I type in thin lines let's have a look in there ah there we go so I've struck a problem straight away so I'm just going to do all those detail lines okay so when I went to thin lines okay there's the inside edge of my structural wall there's the outside edge of my structural wall and then we've got this other edge here which is the um, cladding Okay, which we don't actually want, because what we want to show the builder is where the structural elements tie into each other. So let's start that again. So I'm going to DL. Okay, still in our dash to 0.25. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and grab. Shall we use this little item here, which is a pick lines tool? Okay, it's going to be a lot nicer to us. Okay, because if I use this line here, the line here, it doesn't really want to snap there. But here what I can do is I can go hover over that line and if I tap the tab key, there we go. So it's still going to draw a line but now picks that entire line. Okay, so zoom out. So I'll do that a few times. Again, tab, tab, picking that line there. Again down here, tab, tab. So we're just going to repeat this process pretty quickly. So it's not a um, it's not a perfect system by any stretch of the mean imagination, but it does get us the result that we need. Okay, another line there, there, there. Okay, so I've gone all the way around the edge, but I'm pretty sure that those lines all don't all... See, there it is there. If I type in my thin lines again... No, I can't see it there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, so I can trim these lines up a little bit better, 
Okay, so I'm going to pick that detail line there, so I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to take down to my little sun little glasses icon down here. I'm going to left click, left click there, and I'm going to isolate the category. So this is like a layer isolate function, I suppose. Okay, so what that does is going to find every detail line that we've drawn, and it's going to isolate it for us. Okay, so that would include every detail line of every line weight, every thickness, because they're all the same family. But what I can do now do is I can go grab all this. I can just trim things. So I've, I've gone modify. Uh, there it is here, my trim function. Okay, so I'm just using that to trim those corners up a bit nicer. Okay, all done. Now, while we're isol in this isolate category thing, it's a really good thing. We can now actually grab all of these lines. Okay, we can now create the group. So what we do is we basically we just go right, grab grab everything that we want as part of the group um, for for long term. AutoCAD users who have never used Revit, this the, the closest thing this is is to create a block. We grab several elements and you create um, you know a new item without destroying the characteristics of the original. Okay, so I'll grab everything. Now I'm just going to go type in GP. Okay, and this brings up the group dialog. Okay, so I could call that group 1, or I could say line of first floor above. And I just go OK. And you'll see that you get the dash lines all the way to the outside, which just shows this river showing you the extents of the group. Now, if I go down here into my project browser, all the way down here in families, oh sorry, groups, I open that tree there. Okay, it's a detail model, and there it is there. So that's the same group. And the beauty of these is that you can actually transfer these between Revit files. So these can be exported as a as an RVT file, and then you can drag them into other files. So quite handy in that one. So you can build up a library. They're not restricted to one file. Okay. So the other thing I'm going to do is while I'm able to select just the group, I'm going to grab that group again, and I'm just going to go Control C. Okay. Copy to clipboard. Okay. That's an important part. So I'm just going to reset my isolate there. Okay. I'm going to go back to my ground floor plan. Okay. Now what we're going to do is going to paste. So modifying. Okay. On the left here we've got the clipboard. So remember we copied to the clipboard. So if I go paste, we've got some options there. So we could um, align to select a view. So we could paste this group or whatever we've copied to multiple views. Um, but at this stage I'm just going to align it to the current view. Okay, so aligned is really important because it means it's going to be follow the same placement on the Z axis as well as the X and Y. So if I go aligned to the current view, there it is there. Okay, and if we've done our job right, if we zoom in there, we can actually see that this line here, which is the outside edge of the first floor, is sitting above that timber frame, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay. We wanted that little bit, bit in there. Okay, we've got this line here. Okay, so in architecture, that starts telling us, okay, we really probably should move this window perhaps down a little bit so that we could put a, a, um, a column there or a couple of studs or something like that rather than trying to use a lintel to carry the weight of both the window and the upper floor. Likewise here, couple of design choices there. Do we just have a lintel that's going to try and do all the work or do we redesign the window to suit what's happening up above? Okay, but those are architectural design questions. Okay, and we can basically use this group function for, for everything, you know, so um, really, really handy. I, I use it to, um, I'll create roof lines, um, the locations of, of downpipes, um, all of that wonderful stuff. Okay, so we'll leave it at there and um, we'll see you later.